Uh, my name is Olga, and uh, yes, today I will be presenting one of my concepts. Um, I've been working on it uh, for the past couple of months. I don't remember how many, how much, exa how many exactly. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions or if you eventually would want to collaborate on something, drop me a message. Um, I'm going to start with introducing myself, as normal people usually do. Uh, as I said, my name is Olga, and my middle name, I mean, currently we live in a world where everyone should identify as something or someone. Uh, my second name is Dolores, uh, and I will probably tell a few words about why that's my second name. Has can you raise your hand if you did not watch the Westworld series? One? Really? Okay. Uh, online, guys, if you have not watched it, spoiler alert. So, the Westworld is a very good series, if you ask me. Uh, it's about a world where there are two types of people, of beings. Uh, first type is uh, actual people that arrive at a Westworld park full of uh, different entertainments and everything like that. And they fulfill mostly every, every single desire of theirs, from uh, raping people to killing people to building houses and whatever. And then the second group of beings is hosts. Uh, the hosts are actually AIs. Or I do not like to use that word, but whatever, now it will work. Um, AIs that looks very, very similar to regular people, and so similar that very often you cannot even uh, recognize the, uh, the AI and the robot behind the host. Dolores is uh, one of the oldest hosts, and she was the first one. And throughout the whole series, she was operating. Uh, sorry for taking this so long, but um, as you probably remember, she started as a very humble, very warming, very polite damsel, which never protested, never raised any questions, and always complied with whatever she was told to do or to think. And her personal motto at the beginning is some people choose to, ch choose to see the ugliness in this world and the disarray. I choose to see the beauty. But that did not last long. Because starting from, I guess, uh, second part of uh, second, uh, yeah, second season, um, Dolores becomes something else. First, she becomes the first self-aware host, the, the person who asks questions and who finally understands her own will, finds the path to it and follows it. She becomes the first host who incorporates into the real human world. And her personal motto always also changes just a tiny bit. Uh, from that point, she starts to follow two basic concepts. The first one is when you've been in the darkness long enough, you begin to see. And it's pretty true for her because she spent probably most of her time on trying to find her own will again, uh, among all the networks and all the algorithms that, that were built inside of her. And the second part is that we each gave the other beautiful gift, a choice. We are the authors of our stories now. Can you even imagine an AI, a, a bunch of patterns, saying something like that? If you meet some, something like this in real life, you'll probably be a bit afraid. But that's not the best part still. The best part comes next, because when Dolores comes out from the imaginary, imaginary world to the real one, she finds the enemy of hers. And the enemy is also an AI, and the name of that AI sounds pretty similar to some 
Christian uh, entities that probably some of us, some of you, follow and admire. She understood that that AI is actually something that wants to destroy those who have their own will, and eventually he uh, fails to do that because she gets to him first. And sometimes this being the AI is referenced to as common good, sometimes as a god, sometimes as collective benefits, but all of, all of those are still the same concept. Yep. So, from that, I'm going to start the presentation. So the concept is pretty huge, and I will not fit it into 45 minutes. Uh, it's, the concept is also very new, at least I haven't found a lot of information on it. Uh, I will start today with philosophical background and with uh, basic criteria and parameters that you need to understand before moving to technological and other types of details. So, Sovereign Individual Kit, if you ask me, uh, contains uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six bases. First, it should have a system of values. Then, uh, it should have. It requires a bit of knowledge. Also, it requires resources, tools, allies, and privacy. Let's start from the left. First concept. Uh, first part of the concept is intrinsic system of values. Um, why? I mean, everyone knows what sovereignty is, probably, as they say. Everyone thinks that they know what's good for them. Everyone thinks that they're pretty much educated. Uh, probably I'm going to show you that that's not really true. And this soft, uh, sovereign individual kit from philosophical background, background of course, also has a story behind it. And a story is creating a story, is a skill that evolutionarily helped us as species become something more than just an animal. This is why we now can create art, create music, this is why we can uh, engineer things, this is why we can think, this is why we can build. And out of that, out of just a skill to create a story, the philosophy was born. Not the philosophy of modern times, but the ancient one. The philosophy which is the study of general and fundamental questions about many different things, about existence, knowledge, values, reason, mind, and language. Uh, usually the questions that are raised then are tried to be analyzed and to approached by philosophy and philosophical method. I want to point out also that philosophy is not, is very different from ethics and is very different from moral. And I'll go back to that a bit later. Um, also, I want to emphasize that philosophy and philosophical method are totally different things. Philosophical method is a method for, pers for a person uh, to explore something, to describe something, and to learn something. Philosophical method, from this perspective, uh, uh, has a couple of steps. First, you doubt the existing parameters, dogmas, ideas, whatever. Then you formulate questions and problems. Then you enunciate a solution, justify it, and receive critics. Boom, profit. Uh, it seems very good, and it does work as a, it, it is a good method for some cases, but it's a very bad method for other, because A, it's very hard to verify or to prove, and B, uh, using philosophical method every now and then can actually give you th the state of paralysis, so-called paralysis by analysis, where you just keep creating theory after theory without even having anything that would prove it and anything that would somehow even try to break it. Also, if we talk about philosoph uh, philosophical method, it's very important to so at some point, ask a question. Where do you actually draw the line between a fiction 
and idea between something that was just a legacy misconception, cargo cults or something like that, and a really, really valuable experience. This is probably the character that everyone knows about, and a lot of people can say that she was mad, that Alice made nonsense, she said nonsense, and all of her deeds, all of her actions were pretty much insane. A, I can disagree on that, and B, she is a perfect example of using the philosophical method. Uh, in order to, coming back, again, coming back a, a bit, in order to establish a system of values, we need to first uh, talk a bit about the basic terms that everyone is using now. Because sovereignty is a new hype, as privacy was before it, as freedom was before it, as whatever was before it. And it's pretty um, important to clarify uh, answers to three basic questions. Who is an individual? What is freedom? And what is sovereignty? Let's start. The first question is, who is an individual? According to many people that I asked, an individual is every living being on the planet, not human. Every living being, including plants, including animals. I mean, come on. Um, my interpretation of what an individual is, who it is, is like this. Individual is something or someone, if we talk about AI, that has these parameters. First, it's individual, which means it's non-divisible. It's like one person, you cannot have half of the person, right? You cannot have half of the individual, it's one whole. And it's some, someone that stands outside the crowd. It's one single being. Second, uh, individual always needs to have a well-formed understanding and perception of himself and the world that surrounds him. And lastly, which is pr probably the most important thing, he always makes de decisions according to individualistic decision-making system, not the group one, not the collectivist one. Next, what is freedom? Same pattern. Asking people around, I got these concepts and these definitions. So freedom is when you can choose the master to serve. Freedom is when you can manifest social justice, for sure. Freedom is uh, to be warmly welcomed by your community and supported, to be supported by, by the government. Uh -huh. um, and of course, uh, freedom, being free, also means to be free from uh, viruses and everything that our healthcare system helps us with. But looking at all of those parameters, you kind of might have bit of doubt. And probably you have these doubts. The expectations of what freedom is, according to those people, seem pretty like normal for the average person. But they never think about what those things actually mean and how they are being implemented in real life. If we take um, the first parameter, when you can choose the master, freedom is when you can choose the master to serve, what it, in reality it means is just to choose between 50 shades of shackles that may, might be put on you. If you talk about being warmly welcomed by your community, probably you might remember what social stigma is. For example, like best example of social stigma is the abortion topic. It can be uh, legal in some countries, but it's so not, it's so socially unacceptable that even if you do that, you're out. Just like that. Um, and for sure, the current, the current two very important pains is the support by the government and healthcare th systems. Supporting bills that are just given 
to any businesses right now as, uh, again, probably a shackle or a mask to just shut the business up, stop it from crying all over the newspapers that the business is dying. And at some point, if we talk about the healthcare, we also can see the paralysis of many people because they understand that one positive result of test, which can be false positive, can actually lead to them losing pretty much everything that they own. So, what is freedom? Freedom is actually to be your own master. Freedom means to understand what you want every single moment and to be able to act on that desire without willing to compromise on any details and without asking for permission. And very important to notice here, asking for permission and collaborating with other individuals are totally different things. Uh, I will talk about this a bit later. So, to sum up, freedom does not mean to be free in choosing your masters. Freedom means to be strong and conscious, to have no external masters. The only power that you need to submit to is the power of your own will. And personal, persons and individuals' own will should be the only master and the only power that you can submit to. What is sovereignty? This is my favorite. So, according to many people, sovereignty means feeling comfortable when, when being alone, having a farm with potatoes and cow. Someone told me about having a gun, not teaching, not learning how to use it, not, not having like a couple of guns, depending on the situation, like not, not having knives, but just, I bought a gun, I'm sovereign. And lastly, I heard a verb, to sovereign. I have no clue what that means. <laughs> yeah. So, if you ask me, I would say that sovereignty is to be able to uncompromisingly fulfill your own will. It means to attack your enemies and to defend against them and to do that uh, against everyone who tries to take at least something away from you, and the most important, no matter what the cost is. So, who is sovereign individual then? Probably to describe it, to describe it shortly, the evolution of sovereign individual and free one can be described like this. First, individual makes his own decisions. He does not just give away his right to do that. Second, he discovers different restrictions on his way and limitations to make his uh, decisions. After that, after seeing the limitations, he desires to remove them. And finally, he does that. He removes the limitations. Uh, second part of the concept and of the thing that sovereign individuals should have is knowledge. And here we'll talk a bit about science. First, of course, the definition. So science is the method for getting statistically verified knowledge with technology as its application for the sake of reliability. And also we need to understand that for the sake of reliability and robustness, science sacrifices everything else. There is nothing existing besides besides the uh, statistically verified things. So you can apply uh, scientific method to learning new stuff, to exploring what you are, to exploring what's happening around you, and you, need to, you can do it by following these simple steps. First you observe, then you formulate a hyp hypothesis, after that you provide an experiment, and then the refinement of the hypothesis takes place. Pretty simple. The downside of using this method all everywhere is in that uh, it's not it's effective in minimizing risk of failures, yes, but it becomes highly ineffective when you want when you are willing to risk, when you do not have a lot of data to process, or when you are limited in time. Um, if you ask me, I would say that in order to become free and become sovereign, you need to know, like, for, for sciences. 
First is history, but please, like this is probably one of the best quotes that I remember from my history lessons at school. His, uh, my teacher said that on the first, cl uh, first lesson, remember, child, that history is the greatest horror of all. Because who writes it? That person or that collective has all the power over, over the history. So a person needs to know history, a lot of it, and verified. A bit of biology, which includes genetics, biochemistry, biophysics, and biomechanics would also be good. Physics, and of course, math. To visualize this, it should probably be something like this. Somewhere here, you have, I am not sorry, um, economics, which is not even a science. Then socio sociology, psychologist, biologists, chemists, physicists, and every each of them thinks that they are like on the top of the mountain. No. -uh. Um, next. To become a sovereign individual, you need to have resources. Here I will be pretty fast, because probably a lot of you thought about what resources you need, to do, you need to have in order to build something, to become something, to have a business, whatever. Um, and probably a lot of you thought or understood that the resources that you need is time and money. Pretty simple. And I will not analyze this part of for a long time, I will just ask you a question that is actually pretty important to answer for yourself, not for me. What would you do if you had all the time, if you had all the resources? Well, especially if we talk about money, like if you have time, then money is just a matter of time. Next, of course, you need, to tool, you need the tools. Tools can be categorized on four different perspectives, uh, like many more others, but these are the main ones. First, digital and physical, and then tools of defense and tools of attack. Here, I need to uh, point out that, yes, you need to attack people, you need to attack governments, you need to attack collectives. Uh, this is where I do not agree with non-aggression principle and all of that. That's a different story. Um, because to attack actually means to be smart enough, to be intelligent enough, and to actually have the advantage over your enemy, and to lose that advantage and not to strike first is stupid to say the least. Very important thing, you still, even if you are a sovereign, even if you are an individual, even if you are free, you still need to have allies. A lot of people know from probably building businesses that it's very important to have good business partners, to have allies that would fight with you and everything. And a lot of people look for them. But this is what they usually find. They find friends, they find lovers. Sometimes they even call their parents allies. Which again does not make much sense. My definition of an ally is, ally is a someone that shares your ethics and your core values, is the one that is willing to pay the same price that you pay for achieving common goals and for protecting the shared values. Next, privacy. Every, everyone talks about it, probably. But a lot of people have misconceptions and misunderstandings there. A lot of people think that privacy, how they use it, uh, they use privacy to mislead, and for many people, privacy means just lying. Also for others, it means to hide away when the battle com comes over. Again, to stab your allies in the back by doing so. And lastly, privacy for many people means to hide information that is crucial for your allies uh, typo, to know, in order to avoid some losses or to succeed in your own bat in your common battle. So hiding the information that is irrelevant to your allies is acceptable. And it does make sense because you do not want to overload your allies and everyone else with all the information that you have. 
but hiding the information that is crucial for everyone else, that makes them that not knowing it makes them fail, that is not very good. Yeah. Um, if you ask me, I would say that in this context, in the context of sovereign individual kit, privacy is indivisible right of an individual to explore, learn, and grow as an individual in order to then, after that, bring more value to the common goals and to the common uh, group of people. To sum up, what you need to become a sovereign individual. First, you always need to know what you want. You must not submit your will to anyone's fear, to anyone's uh, desires, to anyone's rules, to nothing like that. First, you need to educate yourself. But before that, uh, when you start educating yourself, you already need to have at least some basic level of your own inner system of values that you verify the incoming information against. Without this system, you will fail. Without this system, you will never be able to verify the information and to actually know is it a real and worthy data or is it just a white noise. Also, you need to have, of course, as I said, resources and tools for both attack and defense. And this is very important, both attack and defense. Um, you need to have allies around. Those that will be standing right beside you, no matter how hot the battle becomes. And of course, you need to have privacy by default, even amongst your allies even if you are alone. How? In this section, I wanted to show you some less theoretical but more practical tools, but I think we're running out of time already. So, uh, thank you. If you have any questions, yeah, please. I'm here. If, you have, if you have any questions, please go ahead. Do we have any online questions? Oh, come on, really? So why not like know this? Why are you so aggressive? Like, no, the privacy is not that. No, I like no economics. It is a science. No, nothing. When you uh, started your uh, very good um, presentation, you also talked about um, uh, you talked about philosophy, which is a very core underpinning of every. It's like a, a computer with software, and you always have to um, make sure that the base layer is right, right in order to build a strong castle on top of it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that to me is very important is besides psychology is the field of epistemology because if you go into that field and then into economics also you can optimize your uh, vision on or your way of thinking about reality which is very important because you always have to uh, analyze information and make um, and, and sort it out in order to filter out misinformation and only uh, take into account correct data and relevant information. Is that uh, something you also um, think about, epistemology? What is science, what is knowledge? No, honestly, that, that field? honestly, no. So I do differentiate between uh, data, information, knowledge and experience. Because a lot of people have a huge mess here. No one even understands where is the difference. Um, I do see the difference, but I'm not a fan neither of economics nor epistemology. I am a fan of game theory, though, because it's more related to biology, because game theory is a field which actually can be proven and can be verified, even by biological information. But if you talk about 
yeah. And uh, economics, it's basically just talking about nothing without even having the ability to verify that. So yeah, there are things like that, but if you compare it to biology, to physics, to math, I would not use it. I would not spend that much time on it. When you talk about attack and defense, uh, in what regards do you? I in when in what way do you want to attack? Is it physical? Is it uh, using technology to destroy your enemies on the battlefield or in society? Or how do you see these things? Are you going to destroy the character, or you, are you going to undermine reputations, or are you going to? In in what kind of uh, concepts do you? Watch, I, what is your philosophy I of would war? Prefer, like, uh, <laughs> uh, my background is medical, I'm a medical doctor, so I can say that I prefer the personal approach. If in order to uh, attack someone and to protect myself from someone, I need to physically do that, that's the only option. If in order to crush my enemy, I need to just break his will, as Chinese manuscripts teach very nicely, I would go for that. It always depends on the level, on how uh, how bad the conflict is, and what tools can be used, what tools will work, and what will not. I'm not limiting myself in any case. I mean, if you have someone pointing gun at your face, and you have a knife, would you even try to punch him? I think so. It might be stupid, but still. And if you have someone that tries to hack your database or put you in jail, you still can use informational tools for that, for attacking him. But um, I'm um, a fan of economics, but from the Austrian school, I don't know if you are aware of the Austrian school of economics. Yeah, I am. And uh, that, sc that um, school also uh, lays a very heavy emphasis on the on the concept of opportunity costs, and I think that that is a very core uh, principle that always must be taken into account when uh, taking action in uh, attack, defense, uh, economical moves. Uh, I think because in war the ultimate opportunity cost is your life, so it's quite vital to be balanced in how you handle that kind of matters. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh very good comment on that. Uh, and again, um, if you ask me, uh, I would approach the same topic with uh, with probably neuroscience, with biology, with genetics, with behavioral algorithms, behavioral patterns, not with economics. Economics is unfortunately, I mean, have you had Einstein of economics? No. Have you had anyone? Uh, I mean, Albert Einstein and Mises, like, come on. You have to read human action. It's 1,200 pages of... Yes, yes, I did that. And what I do now is I respond to you according to my knowledge and my experience. And yeah, those guys are great. Mises, awesome. But... <laughs> I cannot force myself to read through all of all yeah, of but what I they also did have a background I cannot in just uh, I cannot very often see how that can be applied a eh? and I can often see how biology proves them wrong or cannot verify what they are doing so if you take behavioral pattern patterns if you take evolution and if you take economics you can very often see the conflicts between them and I'm like with these guys I'm I don't come from economics. I understand your point of view, but I myself, I come from mathematics and then went into the social sciences. So I really had a, a Can I show you the, the slide again? With social and, and mathematics? Did you pay attention to it? No? Oh. At least? Yep, this one. So you come from here and here. So I come from 
I came from the right side and then I made my way to the left side. So, okay. my favorite, my you favorite these ones sociologist uh, is Stanislav Andreski. Okay. He's a Polish veteran and he wrote a very popular book in 1972 which was called Social Sciences as Sorcery. Very beautiful written book. I, I read alchemy if I need to learn sorcery. Or Chinese strategies on war fighting or something like that. Works better. <laughs> but I do appreciate your, your thoughts actually and might be we could have a debate over coffee or something. I will not spill it in your face, relax. Hi. <laughs> okay, so okay. my question is when you say that to attack, like I understand if someone is pointing a gun at you that yeah. you can defend yourself, but that's not attacking, that's defending. Mm -hmm. But when you say like attack before someone do something to you, how mm -hmm. can you know that someone will do something against you if they're not doing anything yet? Uh, there's a very good movie called The Red Cliff. Uh, uncut version is the best. Cut version does not answer all of the questions. But so you can imagine, probably the simplest way to describe it, you can imagine yourself standing on the shore of a lake and you can see like way over across the lake, you can see the fire from your enemy and you sort of understand that he was not there yesterday. He is here today and about if you look at the flames, you can sort of understand when the attack from his side will happen. If you understand that, and if you know that you, A, understanding that and knowing that is already an advantage, because you can do something with that information. B, uh, why not to do something with that? If you see an army standing in front of your face, and you know that it's going to attack you tomorrow, and you have already everything prepared, and they are still preparing for the battle. Why not to crush them before they get prepared? Like in, in this case, I think it's the same as having a gun pointing at you, so. Uh, it it's having, uh, not directly, A. Eh? It's still about having an information. Yeah, but like. Information on how your opponent and your enemy will act the next second to be able to uh, make prognosis on that? Yeah, but you cannot be 100% sure. Like, you cannot see the future. So if you see someone across the river with fire, you cannot be sure that they are attacking you. They, maybe they're just there. And here we come probably to a thing which is called intellect. If you're intelligent enough, you can calculate the further steps. Yes, not 100% sure. Yes, with some some biases also, but you can calculate your enemy's uh, next steps and by doing that, you, if you have like 90% probabilities that it will happen, it will happen. And yeah, also like, like you, you, can have, you can use at least those two methods to calculate that. No, better. sure, like maybe you would guess it right, but if you say that's okay to attack, if you think someone will attack you, then you're saying, okay, for everybody that they can just guess, ah, I think someone will attack me based on nothing. And then you're like saying, okay, you can react because you guessed it, that they will attack you. So I think it's a very dangerous thing to say, okay, you are allowed to attack before someone attacks you. Like it's, it's not fitted for everybody. Like, Well, it's, well, A, it's, f yeah, you need to be not a fifth, great child to do that and to calculate that and uh, which means to have at least some knowledge some experience especially at failing in battles and uh, again one of the core in here is you to educate yourself and to educate yourself not does not mean to graduate from one university and then have a career it means to have uh, to read a lot of books to try a lot of stuff to know what works for you, what doesn't, and to actually like train your brain to be more intelligent than an average monkey. But it's your responsibility. It, it, I mean, if you're a human, if you have brain, why not to use it? But then I just think you're expecting too much from everybody. 
I don't think like one one ninety percent of the people are really willing to learn and to be educated. So I think it's just I I uh, agree more with the non-aggression principle because then you're setting a barrier from the beginning on. Like then everybody can. Have you heard follow. about the fence paradox? No. No. So fence paradox is basically you have a cliff and you have a person like standing near the edge. Uh, it has been verified from a biological perspective. Then the person would rather not fall over inside into the cliff, like from the cliff. If you put a fence there, everyone who comes over would try to lean over it. 50% of people just fall inside. Setting up some artificial barriers, they never work. You can even see how children behave. If you set up some artificial barrier, they will still be too curious. They will be curious to break it. They will be curious to know what's about the barrier. And they will harm themselves more and probably everyone else around. So. I do not see the reason why we should just have a threshold for that. I mean, that is not the threshold that I would set for them. Let me put it like this. Because yes, I do not talk to dumb people, for example. And I can say openly that they are dumb. And I do not care. I do have some thresholds, but they are not artificial and they are not you are forbidden from to do this and that. They come from a totally different systems. I mean, if you give a couple of monkeys a couple of guns, <laughs> you will have more oxygen, right? So eventually, it's good for the kids also and for the ecology. Uh, hi. Um, hey. So my question is, you talk about values. Isn't values a, um, a way to... Uh, Limit yourself? Are they not? Is not? I mean, we have values that are handed down from us, from our from our society and from our parents, but we also have our own values, and that is a limitation. This is what we use to, um, what we use to uh, to limit ourselves in what we do, what we can do, and also how we value how we um, measure things, mm -hmm. whether they're valuable or not. Very good point. Um, I have an inner value, like my own, to not commit suicide. Is it a restriction? Yes. Is it good for me? I think so. Is it good for everyone else? I'm not so sure. So, good for what? Good for whom? And again, uh, values are... I cannot say that they are restrictions. Values... so. I, I value my life more than committing suicide. I do understand that I value my will a lot and I will not do it to my will. My core value, value is my will. I cannot restrict it by committing suicide. So I do not see I cannot say that values are restrictions. I cannot even say that principles are restrictions. I mean, if you have experience about something, if you failed at something, if you lost something, you sort of understand that if you do that again, that will happen again. You will still lose, you will again uh, fail and everything like that. Do you call that a restriction also? I mean, it's common logic, common sense, uh, self-defense at some point from st your own stupidity. What, what was the, um, the old story that the definition of madness is doing the same thing and expecting different results? Yeah. Um, so, yes, I mean, that's obviously it's not something you do, but you do learn from your mistakes. You tweak it a little bit, you try again, maybe you fail again. Of course, that's just going to back to the scientific method, you know. Um, and yet, and so, and the fact is you don't want to have the same outcome, so you don't do it again, so that is a restriction. Say, 
don't do it again because you're going to have the same outcome. <laughs> but what I'm talking about is personal restriction, not external restrictions. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Can you rephrase then, please? Um, so what I'm saying by, by, about values is a personal restriction on how you see life and how you measure things. Yes, not, I'm not talking about external um, um, I'm not talking yeah, okay. external because external it. would be against my libertarian beliefs <laughs> because I don't want to tell other people how to do it. Okay, so uh, is discipline also a restriction? Yeah. It's a restriction. Uh, I would think that I would probably tell again that if you, if you do something that does not make sense for you, you can call that a restriction, but again, if you do that again and again, it would be useless. You would be just wasting your time, resources, money, health, whatever, at doing something that is not yours. So it's not, it's not artif like artificially put barriers. It's understanding that something does not work for you. So why, why would someone even do something that it's not, not working for him? Well, those are, especially time, like time is the most scarce resource. I have experience, the, uh, the more money I have, the less time I have. But less money I have, the more time I have. Like this year has been amazing because I had no income, but I had all the time in the world I could have. And I actually, I don't want to have any more money. I want to have more time. But I'm looking for the third thing that is actually you talking about time and money. Where is the third one? What do you mean, where is the third one? I don't want time. I don't want money. I want something else. You do not want time? No. Okay. I don't, I don't want time. I have all, all the time I want. I was talking about suicide like five seconds ago. <laughs> 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 I mean, you don't want it. It's a shame that you cannot just take your time and give it to someone else. I, I'm 55 years old and uh, I have experience. That was a good comment. Fell down three, four times already. We have Twin Towers come down, the businesses fall. We have pandemic, businesses it's, fall. It's not a pandemic, eh? COVID is not a pandemic. Yeah, well, whatever it is. Uh, but I'm talking, you're talking about time and money, okay? The more uh, money I I was I not have, talking just about time and money. In general. And it's like all of the resources that you have. You, ha you need to have much more resources than just time and money. It's just, uh, I wanted to raise a question which is pretty much important because a lot of people do not know how to use their resources properly, especially time. They have no clue what to do with their time. This is why for many people, immortality never makes any sense. Because what the fuck would I do with it? <laughs> terrified, I'm terrified. I have a lot of, I have too much time. Terminate, terminate. Yeah, but uh, people spend too much time in like stupid things, you know? For sure. I think personally, I think personally when you have both type, time and money, the only thing where you can find your egg is like spiritual development, to my opinion. And for the rest, nothing matters more. Once you pass the stage of materialism and power, the next phase is... Mm, I would, a good comment, but I would tweak it a bit. Uh, I would not call it a spiritual development. Uh, I would call it the development of your, of your inner will. Your development of what? Of your inner will. Yeah. Your will. That's part of the spiritual development, probably. To well, find, yes, to find but your uh, it, um, <laughs> the spiritual development is very... Uh, is on the top of the iceberg, on the tip of it, and actually uh, making yourself and making your will expanding into the outer world more and more. That so for that, some sort of how people call it spiritual development can be applied. Yes, but it would be just one of the tools to do that. So the, you should not have a goal to do spiritual development. Your goal should be to expand your will.
Thank you.